Hello, this is Rob Doss, and I'm here to show you very quickly how Splunk MSE, the Splunk storage engine for MySQL, uh, operates, how quick, how quick it is to download and uh, get it up and running, and it's a pretty powerful tool. So the first thing uh, that you want to do is you actually want to go to the Bitbucket. Uh, I'm not going to show you how to get there, and look at the quick start instructions. Download the appliance. To make things quick, I've already downloaded the appliance. And so what we're going to do is we're going to now run the appliance, uh, which is very quick. Um, I'm, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to launch VMware Fusion, but you can use VMware Player on Linux or on Windows. I'm on a Mac, so I'm using VMware Fusion. And then I'm going to go do a file open and open the virtual appliance, uh, which I already have sitting in a directory, which I've downloaded. Now I double click on that, and right here you can see the uh, virtual machine come up and so it only takes a second to come up. Once it comes up it'll tell you uh, all kinds of information about uh, uh, how to log in and uh, where to point your browser which we're going to do in a second. So waiting just a second for it to come up. There it is right there and it tells you uh, the login is Splunk MSE and the password is password and to point your browser to uh, 192.168.1.114. So 192.168.1.114 and port 8080. And it comes up with a login field. And it tells me to use Splunk MSE and password as the login. And then it comes to a uh, how to use Splunk MSE page, which just shows you a few things that you can do with this GUI. What you're going to want to do, the first thing, is make sure that Splunk is up and running somewhere. In this case, I have Splunk up and running here on my local laptop, just to make this easy. But Splunk can run, be running anywhere as long as you have access to it. The next thing I'm going to do is, is create tables from all saved searches. What that's going to do is execute saved searches, um, the actual do the search in Splunk, and then once it finds the columns, it'll actually create tables inside of this instance of Splunk of, uh, I'm sorry, of MySQL, which is running inside of the virtual appliance. So the first thing I want to do is I want to um, decide, uh, figure out where my Splunk host is running and also the management port. So in this case, 192.168.1.109 and the management port is 8089. I'm going to leave this namespace alone here. I'll t we'll talk about that some other time. A maximum result is 10,000, so whenever a search is executed, it will go no further than 10,000 results, and then uh, admin and change me. And then what I'm going to do is hit enter, which is now going to create the tables. And this takes a, a little bit of time because it has to run through all the safe searches. Um, what it's doing is actually executing searches, but it doesn't know what the column definitions are until it actually executes the search. That's uh, We call that uh, late binding, which means that we don't know what the columns are ahead of time at the time we're inputting the data, but we do know what they are after we actually execute a search. Every search has different columns that it finds uh, at search time, and so that's how we create the columns. So here you can see uh, over here all of the, oops, all of the table names uh, that it created, and those are also the names of the saved searches. And these are the saved searches, the names of the saved searches. Over here is the host, and you can tell that this Splunk instance is up and running because it's green, etc. What I can do is uh, click on one of these magnifying glasses, let's say inputs crawl, pick the magnifying glass, and it shows me the column definitions for each one of the uh, columns that it derived. Now we're going to execute a small SQL search against this just to make sure that we're actually up and running. There's the SQL search, and it actually executes the search at that point in time, the Splunk search, and then populates the data. There's no importing or exporting with the storage engine. The data actually lives inside of Splunk. So here you can see the different columns have been populated. This thing here only uh, populates 10 rows, but we can actually go and take a look at, um, at uh, a SQL terminal, and I can show you what's going on here. So I can say MySQL, um, and we'll log in as Splunk MSE, and it requires a password, and the host is 192.168.1.114. And it asks me for the password, which is password. Now we're inside of the MySQL client. We're going to use the Splunk MSC database and show the, show the tables. You can see there are the tables. 
select star from inputs uh, crawl. And it takes a second to execute the Splunk search, and then you can see there, in fact, is the is all of the data populated in there, so it works pretty well. I can also, through this GUI, then go ahead and create another database if I wish, so I can partition it. Let's just call it Rob's DB, and as you can see, there's no tables in there right now, but I can go in there and then create a new table and do the same thing. Let's say, let's call it um, uh, test table. And instead of a safe search, we're going to make this a regular search. Then we can type in a search string, something like error. And the same Splunk host. And 10,000 again. And admin, change me. And now, as you can see down here, we're waiting. There, it created the table. Let's take a look at it real quick. Let's select, uh, just for kicks, the raw data only. And or the raw column, and there, in fact, it is everything that has error in it. And that's pretty much the end of my demo at this point. I hope you enjoyed it.